We're going to be coming from uh, Psalms 103. Praise the Lord. We're going to begin to read. We're going to go, uh, read. Let's go down the first 14 verses. And we're going to read responsibly beginning at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses. His acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, not rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Amen. Praise the Lord. He knoweth our frame. Hallelujah. Precious Father, thank you for this day that you've given to us one that we've not seen before. We are so grateful that we have life through Jesus Christ. Bless us today again through your word. Let it come alive. Open it up. Open up the word that we may perceive and grasp what you're saying to us. Father, we thank you and give your name to glory and your name to honor. Take control now and fill this atmosphere with your presence and your holy love. We ask it in Jesus' name and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to start a series on healing the sick. The Lord laid that on my heart. A series on healing the sick. Um, so if you have loved ones that are ill, please bring them that they can hear as much of the word uh, as possible. We're going to be talking about the power of the word, what it can do, and uh, as, a, as an introduction to healing the sick. And so please bring those that need healing. Let's reach out to somebody that needs help from God. And uh, God is going to minister healing to them as <clears throat> the right amount of faith comes through the word, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to thank the Lord. Um, I, I was... Has been um, for the last probably three or four years or more, the Lord is through different ones sharing how He's going to bring some of His people back before He does this great thing that He's going to be doing in the area. And uh, so on Wednesday, I heard something that blessed my heart. 
We have someone here that's uh, been with us and spent many years with us, and she's back today. But she's not only back today, she says she's back. So, yeah. Ramonia Mitchell, God bless you. It is such a blessing to have her with us here. And uh, those of you that were with us in the early years, you know the blessing she's been for many years. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I also want to say, to ask, to ask your prayers. We want to do at least a couple of uh, general outreaches before the season is, is over, before it gets too cold. And... Uh, so just be praying for it. We want to go back out in Young's Terrace again. Hopefully we won't have any difficulties. And uh, we want to do an outreach there. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get it at least before next month's out or July. And then get another one before the season gets too uh, cold. Anyway, you know, part of our... A big part of our Christian witness is to win souls. We never want to forget that. So um, be praying. Just pray God clear the way so that uh, uh, the city and the officials that we can get in all the necessary forms so that we can uh, get out there as we've been doing. They, a lot of them are at home now, so they don't work in the office. And I've been called in a few times and hadn't been able to get them and just schedule an appointment. But uh, be praying, and I know the Lord will work it out. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to talk about healing the sick. I um, want to give God a note of thanks. I Just to, while we were out, our university in Greensboro had uh, a celebration, or the Alumni Association had a celebration for those, the class of 72, which we were part of, and um, I, I saw a list of those that graduated in 72, and there were over 160 people that have gone on out of that class. So I'm standing here in gratitude <laughs> for God's mercy. I never want to take his gracious kindness for granted. It's because of God's mercy that I'm still living. And uh, I know that quite well. Amen. Well, we're going to look into the word a little closer today. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I'm going to focus in on verses 2 and 3 to preface what I'm saying. Bless the Lord, O my soul, verse 2, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. And iniquities has to do with those hidden sins. You know, hidden sins are sins that you can't see. But since God looks on the heart, he sees them. But he forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now, I'm going to refer to that again in a little bit, but um, there are benefits in serving God. There are benefits for the soul and their benefits for the body. And God has a lot of compassion and he longs to heal all who are sick. If that was not so, when he came on earth, he would not have healed as many people as he did. And I believe that he wants us to, at this time, stress 
God's compassion and his love for healing the sick. And I want you to follow with me now, because if you've got a pen, you can write these down and take it home, some things that I'm, statements I'm going to make. Before people can have a steadfast faith for the healing of their body, they must be rid of all uncertainties concerning God's will in the matter. Before people can have a steadfast faith, a faith that doesn't waver, for the healing of their body, they must be rid of all uncertainty concerning God's will in the matter. In other words, we must know of a truth that in spite of our lives, in spite of everything, God desires to heal us, our bodies. And It is so important. Now, I want you to look at what he says in verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. That deals with the soul, right? Who healeth all thy diseases. That deals with the body, right? Now, it is just as important To know that God's desire is just as much to heal the body as it is the soul. It's all in one sentence, right? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So, in order to have a Steadfast faith for healing. Somebody say steadfast faith. There must be the right, what they call mental attitude. Or the renewed mind. All right? Before steadfast faith is impossible. We're not talking about wavering faith. We're talking about steadfast. Steadfast faith, the faith that sticks to it. When I'm believing God for healing, I'm, my faith is not such that when the pain comes, I, I, I doubt. But a steadfast faith, even when pain is there, I believe just like is done. In order to have that kind of faith. It must be a right mental attitude or a renewed mind. Yeah. Romans 12, 2 said, be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Transformation. The right mental attitude. The, 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 the thinking, right? And then it is important that the mind of those seeking healing be brought into harmony with the mind of God. Are we right? I remember what James said in James 1, a double-minded man is what? Unstable in all of his ways. So look at somebody that says, a right mental attitude is necessary for steadfast faith. Come on, let's give God thanks. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. The scriptures teaches that it is just as much God's will to heal the body as it is to heal the soul. When a soul gets healed, a soul gets saved, then we're so excited. And sometimes people may carry physical conditions to their grave. But God sees it differently. He gets no glory out of somebody carrying a physical condition all their lives. Because the price 
has already been paid. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So the scriptures teach that. We just read a scripture here. It says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all of thy diseases. Paul said, I wish that your body, soul, and spirit be preserved blameless. Beloved, I wish that you would prosper even as your soul prosper. God loves us and he wants us well. It's only the evil one that wants to make us feel that God is making us suffer physically. But why would God make us suffer in the very thing that he went to Calvary for? Doesn't mean we can't learn something, but he's not making us suffer. Are you with me? See now, uh, b- before we can receive healing for this body, we must be rid of all uncertainties. If I feel like God is somehow punishing me, I'm not going to get healing that way. That's an uncertainty. Are you with what I'm saying? So all of the uncertainties concerning healing the body and God's will to heal the body must be dealt with. If we're going to have steadfast faith. Steadfast faith doesn't mean you'll be healed physically manifested today. But it means that you're healed because the word says you're healed and the manifestation will take place sooner or later. Steadfast faith. Isn't that right? Unless someone says, okay, I didn't get healed. Faith. All right. So, his promises are each a revelation of what God is eager to do. All of his promises. He's eager to do it. So, it's good to remind him of his promises. Right? Lord, you said. Isn't that right? He doesn't get upset with that. Now, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, I think it is. With the heart, man believes to righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. What I believe in my heart, I confess. What I believe in my heart, I Confess. Confession is made to salvation. The salvation comes when confession comes. Right? So I know he was talking about if you believe in your heart and so on, but there's a principle that he's pointing out here, right? With a heart, man believes to righteousness. But there's two parts. It goes beyond belief in my heart. There is a confession with my mouth. Are you with me? So if I say I am healed, I'm not lying. If I believe in my heart, it's lining up. Hallelujah. It's in harmony with the mind of God. His promises are each a revelation of what God is eager to do for us. With the heart man believes the righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made to salvation. The Bible says in Luke 4, 4, it is written that man shall not live by food alone. We were talking about that. My wife and I was talking about it on yesterday. Got really excited. Do you know what he's saying? So I got to saying, okay, it's it's, it's a a dual kind of need, right? So he says, man shall not live by food alone. How many like to miss meals every day? Anybody? Let me see your hand right fast. Nobody? Hmm. Nobody wants to miss a meal today. Nobody gets excited about it, right? What about fasting two or three days every week? Anybody? Anybody get excited about that? Nobody. 
But the other part of us, we fast a lot. We starve it a lot, right? He said, man shall not live by food alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Does man live? So I was thinking, we were thinking about that and having some real fun discussing it. And, 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 and you know, have you ever seen a person that, that, that they don't eat properly? Their eyes look weak around the eye. Physically, they just don't have the energy, right? Because in the food is natural energy. The nutrients for the body. Thank you. Well, if I want to be more like my Lord, if I really want to be more like the Lord, I got to eat better. Isn't that right? The word, got to get this, is the seed of divine life. Wow. If I really want to be more like Jesus. So the writer says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he's saying we must live by the word. I remember God telling me that. He said live by the word. Don't live by how you feel. Don't live by how things look. He said, live by the word. What does the word say? We're lining our lives up with the word of God. Living by the word. I, I, I have a, a friend that I know that he, his life is based on principles. And when he says things and when he does things, he's always referring to what the scriptures say. He's lining his life up with the word. And I learned something from him. I said, wow, that's really neat. That's good. He's serious about this thing. He's lining his whole testimony, his life up by the word of God. Right? Well, you know what Psalm 1 and 1 said? Blessed is that man. Right? All right. Well, that's, 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 that's so, so exciting. So man shall not live by food alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The word is the seed. Yeah. Somebody say it's the seed. The seed. Now you, 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 you know, just like I know, that if you take seed and put it in the soil of the ground and leave it there for a few days, something's going to happen, right? Yeah. But it has to stay. In the ground. If you dig it up, it cannot produce. Now the seed, the seed has the potential. But it's got to go in the soil. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. You can get any kind of seed that produces fruit. That seed land on top of the ground is absolutely no good. It's beautiful, but it cannot produce fruit until it is in the soil and remain in the soil. Have you ever tried to produce a harvest and not sown anything? It's a little bit absurd, right? What about a farmer? You take a farmer Let's say he's, he's got a, a field and he has corn to seeds. He's got a few bags of seed that he hadn't planted. So he walks around. I believe God's going to give me a harvest. I believe God's going to give me a harvest. I mean, he's faithful in confessing it, but he is not putting the seed in the soil. Do you think he's going to get a harvest? 
Look at somebody say, see la. God began to show me this thing. I said, oh, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. He said, the word is the seed. And you remember when he was talking about the different soils that the word falls on? Some falls. Now, I, I don't want to be meddling today. Now, I just, uh, somebody might think I'm meddling a little bit. But I, you, he, the different heart, he says, some falls on stony ground. You know, it, it, and, and when it comes up, it comes up and, and all of a sudden the, the, the thorns choke it. So it can't produce. And, and he even went and gave us an example of what he's talking about. He said the thorns deal with the cares of this life. You can get so bogged down with cares, but you got the word in it. But every time the word tries to produce fruit, it's got it by the neck. And, and so it cannot produce fruit because the cares have not been cast over on the Lord. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house. Then he went on and talked about another soil. The seed gets there but it's not planted deep enough so it's right there just under the dirt so a nice rain come wash part of it away and if the rain don't wash it away it may spring up real fast but guess what happened once it starts to get any kind of size have you ever seen a stalk that sometimes this, this, the uh, roots are not deep enough to keep it straight and strong and so it starts to lean <laughs> <laughs> because the, 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 the roots didn't go deep enough in the soil you know this is a time when God is telling us to get a little closer to him is it because, see, God sees what's going to happen. up there. And so God says, now, you, you can't make it off the same little bit that you had. I get a little dab of the word maybe once a week or maybe uh, every other week. I get a little bit of the word. Yeah, yeah, you know, but he said, you can't quite make it on that now because circumstances are coming and Satan has, has upped his, his plans. You know what I'm saying? So now you've got to have a little deeper root. You've got you to gotta know what you're saying. Isn't that right? You've got to be more sure. Of your life, let your roots go deeper now. Ah, you, 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 you. He said, "If you continue in my word, and my word abides in you, you can ask what you will." Anybody ever experienced delays? Long, long time delays. There are delays. But there's some things shouldn't be delayed. All right. Seed is the word. It is the seed of life. But not just life. The divine life. Hallelujah. Listen. In the seed. I'm still dealing with the seed. Uh, now, all this is, this, this is uh, before we get into healing, all right, the sick. Because a lot of times when people, they may have been prayed for so many times, but there's not that faith to be healed. So the seed now, <clears throat> in the seed there are possibilities beyond the power of the human mind to conceive, right? Just as in a little seed there's a potential tree that is a million times bigger than the seed. No, y'all, you, you missed that. You missed that. You missed that. What are you saying with that? I am saying this. This is what the word is saying. You don't know the potential of God's word planted in your heart. Watered. And when it begins to bring forth fruit. A thousand times more than what you could ever do or think to do. The power and the potential is in the seed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. 
right now, y'all. You, 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 if you like me, you want to do something, you know, for the Lord. But you have to have the seed. It must stay in your heart. You know, if a farmer takes that seed and, and goes, I ain't see nothing. He's going to dig it up. Let me see if that seed is working. Man, I know maybe I did. Maybe I planted it too deep. So he goes and dig it up. Now, whatever the process was, now he's got to start all over again. And sometime in our confession, we dig the seed up. Y'all, y'all got to hear what I'm trying to say. You just planted the seed and turned right around. Well, I don't know what, how God's going what, to, what God's going to, I don't know how I'm going to make it. But you just came and you sang and you danced before the Lord as to what God is going to do. And now you said, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Anybody hear what I'm saying? And when doubt comes, it's like digging up the little seed that was there. Instead of digging it up, go back to what was said in the beginning and think about it and say it day after day. And all of a sudden, it's going to go down into the soil of your heart. And once it goes down there, you're home free. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look, you, you ain't got to pray so hard to try to make it happen because it's in you. And it began to produce the fruit that you want. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's like God saying, you, you can't do it. Let no seed do it. Keep the seed watered and in your soul and everything going to work out all right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It is necessary for the seed to be planted in the mind and in the heart. It's not planted until it's known, received, and trusted. Y'all hear that? Is not planted until it's known, received, and trusted. <laughs> Gotta be trusted. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But David said, But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Look, look at your neighbors and neighbor, you got to trust him. Hallelujah. When you don't understand, hallelujah, you still got to trust him. When things don't look right, you still got to trust him. When that faith is steadfast, it doesn't matter what's happening around you, you still can trust him. You say God hadn't changed his mind. Circumstances may look different, but God hadn't changed his mind. So I'm standing on the rock. Hallelujah. I'm standing on what he said. Because it's got to come to pass. What he said in the days of in Daniel, he said, It's they that know their God shall be strong and do the exploits. My God. You remember Joshua? Joshua was calling. He was fighting the battles. There were several armies gathered up against him. And he fought till the sun was, looked like it was going down. And Joshua was winning because he was right smack in the center of God's will. And got good to Joshua. Joshua looked and saw the sun going down too much. And he said, son, stand. You stand still. They're up and get in. And the sun for a whole 24 hours in a day stayed right there. But, 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 but before that happened, God told him, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. I like what Jake said. Moses was a great man, but look how God said it. He says, you know, he could have said, well, Moses, my servant, is dead. Man, he was awesome. Boy, I loved the way he submitted to me. He could have went on 
But this is what God said. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, now Joshua wants you to. That was it. He gave one little line. What was God saying? God is saying, I get glory out of every vessel. I can turn that vessel and do whatever I want to do with that vessel. But you must not praise the vessel. You must praise the, the power of God that works through the vessel. Y'all yo, yo got to hear what I'm trying to say here. My God, hallelujah. He said, Joshua, listen, Moses is dead. Now you get ready to go over this Jordan. You take this people over there. He said, I want to say something to you. You haven't passed this way before. But I'm going to give you the formula for success. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But you shall meditate on it. Day and night. See, because, you see, if it don't get inside of you, you're going to say what's on the inside of you. Thou shalt meditate in it. Day and night. See, transformation come when you meditate. Isn't that right? Transformation come. He said, then. Look at somebody say, then. You make your way prosperous. Then. You'll have the good success. <laughs> You've got to pause and let's give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ah, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. My God. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf, my God. God shall not wither. Whatever he do shall prosper. The formula is the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is an EOE. Or EO, equal opportunity. Isn't that right? <laughs> Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I thought that something else was hindering me. <laughs> my God, my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> My God. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Wow, Paul, what you, why do you say that? Because it's the power of God unto salvation. Not ashamed. He said, therein is the righteousness of God manifested from glory to glory or from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. And the word, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. James, oh man, James said, if you look steadfastly into the perfect law of liberty 
whoever that person is, they'll be blessed in their deed. Jesus and God told Joshua, you want to have good success, Joshua? You got to keep your mind on things that are above. Hallelujah. My God. The gospel is the power of God. Hallelujah. God says, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. That's what he said. He said, glory to God. Now let me, let me close with this, what the scripture has to say about healing. So we're going to be moving into healing the sick, but this is kind of just, just uh, uh, something to prep us. So that we understand the importance of the word. Go get somebody and tell them. Say, hey, got to get under the word. It ain't about to preach you. I just, just get under the word because the word's coming now. And the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? Isn't that right? And how can they preach? Except they were sent. Oh, I'm sent. Isn't that right? <laughs> so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Something is happening in you right now. While the word of God is going forth. Something is happening to your spirit. Something is happening to your soul. Something is happening. Faith is being enlarged in your soul. Because of the word of God. It brings life. Come on, let's give God some praise. He's worthy today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Something is taking place in your soul right now because of the word of God, because of what God has ordained. Something is taking place for faith cometh. That word cometh in the Greek means enters or grows. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come on, give God some praise. Your life is changing right now. Your life is changing because I'm declaring the word of God. Because I was sent by God. Because he raised us up. Because he said go preach my word. And because the word has been anointed by God. You are being changed right now. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. My God. We're being changed. Paul said from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He, he forgive. He forgive it all. Thine iniquities. He heal it all. Thy diseases. Glory to God. It is God's will that your body be healed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. The writer of Proverbs says in chapter 4, verse 20, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Y'all hear what he's saying? And health to all their flesh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. John 10, 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. But I'm come that the sheep might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. He says, I am the resurrection. He said, I am the good shepherd. He said, I am the door. And he said, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. He, and, and God, he told Moses, Moses said, who am I, who should I tell sent me to you, to Pharaoh? He said, tell him that I am. I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm everything that you'll ever need. I'll be what I need to be in order for you to become what you need to be. I am that I am. Hallelujah. Jesus came there in John and began to reiterate the I am. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Uh, hallelujah. You remember what he said? I'm closing with it. And uh, uh, when he went to check Lazarus out and she said, Lord, Lord, no, 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 no. By this time he's stinking. He said, I'll come and heal him. I'll come and raise him. Oh, no, 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 Lord, I know that he's going to rise in the, in the resurrection. In a certain time, in a certain day, he's going to be resurrected. But she didn't know she was looking at the resurrection. So he said, I am the resurrection. <laughs> I'm everything, hallelujah, that you're hoping for. I'm everything that you need. I'm everything that you needed in the past. I'm everything that you need right now. And I'm everything that you'll ever need. Come on, somebody, give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm everything that you'll ever need. That's why they call him I am. They can't give him a name such because he's everything. My God, hallelujah. Stand on your feet, if you will. And let's give God some praise. He's worthy. God, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. Magnify you. We bless you and we honor you. You've been so good. You've been so good to us. You've been so kind and so gracious to us. You came that we might have life. And have it to the full. Glory, glory, glory to God. I wonder if you'll lift your hands to the Lord. Father, I pray for the body now. I pray for all of us. That the word of God will continue to have his free course in our lives. In our hearts. And Lord, a healing for the sick will be a simple thing for God. After sufficient word has come, hallelujah, that makes faith possible, hallelujah, then God, your spirit will follow the word, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, God. We're giving your name to praise and we're giving your name to glory. Now, I want to say something to you because this is going to happen sooner or later if it has not happened today there are going to be people sitting right in the midst while the word is going forth and the power of the Lord is just going to heal them while the word is going forth hallelujah glory to God I am so certain of that because the nature of God is when his word is preached he confirms his word. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The thing that is relieving to me is we don't have to try to bring healing. We don't have to try to heal ourselves. We need to get the word in us. It will produce its fruit. Isn't that right? The potential is phenomenal. One more time, let's thank the Lord. Father, we bless you. Magnifying you. You're great forever. You're marvelous in all of your ways. Father, I pray today now for the healing of the bodies. For any and every one. Of where the word entered. And the heart was prepared for healing. 
I pray for them that the power of my Lord shall do that which only you can do by your loving spirit have your way oh God hallelujah 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 <laughs> glory to God touch today take away all kinds of condition Wanda come please take away every kind of condition Lord that exists where faith has entered the hearts of your people now in the name of Jesus hallelujah glory to God glory to God glory to God glory to God hallelujah glory to God hallelujah hallelujah God you're true to your word and we thank you much for your great kindness oh Thank you. Thank you for your word. It provides the light that we need. Thank you, Father. For whoever on t TV or whoever got in this place, your word has entered to bring life or healing this day. Work your plan. Work your will now. We release your healing power. For the sick today hallelujah as we begin to praise him then we're going to pray for give you if God gives us any particular word of knowledge and then we're going to let you go let's thank him once again father we thank you glory 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 to God glory to God glory to God glory to God Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, the, 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 the somebody is having a problem with their esophagus too. But God is healing you, whoever you are. If you, if you feel that God's talking to you, you just receive. God's going to heal you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for healing them, O God, of the esophagus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. oh yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. You got something. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your healing touch, Lord. Somebody here, God's going to heal your eyes. You've been having eye problems. God's going to heal your eyes. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I heard the, um, the word digestion. And God going to heal digestive issues. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for your healing love. You're so wonderful. You care for us. Let your wonderful love be manifested continually. Somebody's got a stomach condition. A stomach condition there has been going on for a while. If you're hearing me by web television, if you fit this, then that word is for you. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for healing that stomach condition right now. Manifest your healing power. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. 
in Jesus name thank you hallelujah the Lord is is beginning to heal those that have thyroid issues diagnosed with thyroid cancer God God is healing the thyroids hallelujah just open your wide your spirit and lay hold on it and expect it against everything that you go through with it believe God hallelujah and receive the healing receive it now in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord join me in praising the Lord thank you father thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you father thank you for your people thank you Lord we give your name the praise we give your name the glory somebody's God's healing the mind you need healing in the mind Oh God, I thank you right now. You have been troubled a lot in your thinking. Just, just really, really troubled. And you're trying to get the victory. But the Lord says he's going to heal your mind. God, I thank you for healing the mind now. Let the virtue and the power of Christ go out now and minister to that need. In the precious name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. 